And we'll start with Sri Lanka, where the Prime Minister uh, has been appointed the country's acting president. In the capital, Colombo, protesters have broken into the Prime Minister's office, breaching military defences. The state broadcaster also stopped its transmission after people broke into the studio and disrupted a live broadcast. A state of emergency has been imposed as demonstrations continue. Prime Minister Vikramasinghe has called on the police and military to try and restore order as security officials struggle to contain growing protests. Sri Lankan forces have used tear gas to disperse swelling crowds who were chanting slogans against the Rajapaksa family. Last night, President Gotabaya Rajapaksa fled to the Maldives, ending days of speculation about his whereabouts. Let's go live now to our correspondent, Dasuni Atauda, who is in uh, Colombo. Uh, Dasuni, what's the latest where you are? What are you seeing? Well, Oli, uh, as you can see right behind me is uh, the presidential secretariat where uh, the public at large continue to flock towards this area because the presidential secretariat is where the main protest site is, which is now being dubbed the Gota Go Gama, uh, the Gota Go Village, rather. So what you can see right behind me is that uh, even though it is an evening, today is a poya day as well here in Sri Lanka, which means it is a public holiday, but the public continues to come towards uh, this location, which is also one of the main protest sites. However, the epicenter of tensions and uh, clashes between the security officials took place a few kilometers away from here at uh, the office of the Prime Minister, which is about two and a half kilometers from this specific location. And what we know so far is that the clashes that took place at uh, that location had resulted in 30 civilians getting injured and are currently being treated here at hospitals. However, even though clashes have some sort of way subdued at that location, at the Prime Minister's office, uh, the Prime Minister's office was completely infiltrated by these protesters and the public have now broken into uh, that property as well. And what are the protesters around you saying? What do they want? Well, to be honest, they still want President Gota Berat Paksa to step down. I'm sure you are aware of the Gota Go Home or Go Home Gota slogan which has been chanted for months on end in this country. And even though on the 13th of July, today has been slated to be the day where President Gotabe Rajapaksa is set to hand over his resignation. It's 5 p.m. here in Sri Lanka, and we are yet to anticipate uh, an official letter of resignation from the president. So they are still resisting, and they are demanding for the president to step down. Meanwhile, because uh, the speaker now made it official that Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe will be stepping up to the role of acting president in the absence of President Gotabe Rajapaksa. That's when the protesters moved towards the office of the Prime Minister to demand for him, the Prime Minister, to step down as well. And that is the sentiment at the right now. Well, let's develop that line of thought a little bit further because uh, officials are trying to restore order. Is there any chance of that with the current situation that we're looking at? To be honest, given the current situation, there is emergency law in place. There is a curfew in effect here at the Western province. But the public at large seem to disregard it and give zero thought to these laws and the special directives that are in place right now. Uh, the president, I beg your pardon, the acting president, uh, Prime Minister Anil Vikramasinghe, did say that he will be trying his level best to bring in the military and the security to instill some form of law and order, peace and security in the coming hours. However, that does not seem to be, be the case right now, given that uh, the prime minister's office is now completely infiltrated uh, by the protesters.
Okay, and Dustini, finally, before I let you go, what about the day-to-day -day economic situation for these protesters and also the rest of the population? Uh, what, what are we seeing on a day-to-day -day basis now in the economy when it comes to things like uh, fuel supplies? Well, even though you see the public quite literally in their thousands gathering here, when you speak to them, they still face these difficulties on a day-to-day -day basis. We still have a fuel shortage in this country. If you are to travel on any road here in Colombo and the suburbs or any part of this country, you will see lines exceeding kilometers and kilometers on end of vehicles that have been parked for days on end just to get fuel because there still is an acute shortage of fuel. That's not all. There is also a shortage of gas. But to a certain extent, the delivery of gas has now resumed here in the country. But the public sentiment is that they are suffering. They've had enough and they want the president and now the prime minister to both step down because they've just had enough of these problems. OK, Dasuni, thank you. That's Dasuni Athauda live from Colombo. And we're going to stay with this story. Uh, and for more, we can talk now to Sri Lankan parliamentarian Shanakayan Raza Manikam, who's also uh, in Colombo. Thank you very much for uh, joining us. Uh, what chance do the authorities have at this stage of retaining any uh, sense of control and order in Colombo? Uh, it's important that we uh, look at uh, how we ended up here in, since the 9th of uh, July. On the 9th of July, uh, protesters, uh, peaceful protesters from all parts of the country came to Colombo amidst the fuel crisis, uh, demanding that uh, President Gotabe Rajapaksha and Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe should both resign. Uh, at that point, the president promised that he would resign on the 13th of uh, uh, July, which is today, and it's almost 10 past 5 p.m., and we still have not seen a resignation letter from the president, and we are told that he's hiding, uh, he's in exile in Maldives at the moment. Uh, however, uh, the pr prime minister this morning declared a state of emergency in Sri Lanka, and uh, the lawyers soon called out uh, that, uh, that that the, the declaration was illegal because that can only be done by the president. And thereafter, uh, we saw the Speaker of Parliament uh, release a letter uh, stating that the president has appointed the prime minister as the acting president since uh, the president is out of the country. However, it's important to note that the, the key demands, the key requests by the peaceful protesters, number one was that President Gotabi Rajapaksha must resign. Number two was that Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe should resign. So the protesters are not going to stand down and be happy to accept Ranil Vikramasinghe as the new uh, acting uh, president, even if it's for a period of a day or even for an hour. So uh, it's, it's very simple to contain the situation. All that needs to be done is two letters need to be signed by the president and the prime minister saying that they're uh, resigning. And then the speaker will act as the acting president for the next week. And within the week, if Ranil Vikramasinghe wants to be the president, he could try to become the president uh, through the majority support of the parliament. However, it's important to also note that the ruling party, uh, the Sri Lanka Pudujana Peramuna, which is the party that Rajapaksha has created, do not have any legitimacy to con uh, continue uh, to stay in power, even though they have majority in parliament, because the people, are, people want them gone because they're the ones who are responsible for the crisis. So the best possible scenario is that uh, the, the ruling party, even though they have two-thirds majority, should allow the opposition to form a minority government or even a unity government where they can they cannot be part of the cabinet because uh, the country is not going to accept the same crooks who are in charge uh, for this and who are responsible for this crisis to be in power again. Well, how would, in that scenario, an opposition uh, form a minority government that would be able to get on top of some of the economic issues that the country is facing? What policies would they put in place uh, to ease the difficulties that uh, Sri Lankan citizens are seeing up and down the country? Well, every day that the protests continue is we are delaying uh, our road to recovery. So we need to understand that Sri Lanka is facing an economic crisis and thereby it led to a political crisis. So first we need to resolve the political crisis so that we can uh, start the recovery path on our economic crisis. So whichever government that is formed should be only a transitional government and should only be there for a transitional period of time and then we should go for fresh elections. And uh, it's important that we uh, manage our restructuring of our debt uh, for the IMF program. And also we need to look at... Uh, uh, addressing the loss-making state-owned enterprises as well. So 
Even on top of that, I think we'll need a large uh, infusion of cash uh, in foreign currency that should come to Sri Lanka so that we can get rid of the pain that the people are facing. The queues need to stop. The, uh, we need to have uninterrupted electricity. We need to have uninterrupted supply of gas for the people to get on with their ordinary lives, uh, get on with their day-to-day -day lives so that the normalcy can return. So uh, we would need to speak to friendly nations uh, that could help us uh, get a cash infusion because if not, uh, any uh, economic uh, revival plan will not happen. So uh, India in the past, has, uh, in the last few months, has uh, helped significantly. We are very thankful to the people of India and also to the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu for sending essential supplies. Uh, at the same time, I think we, the, the, the uh, international community should now intervene and, uh, uh, and, and make sure that Ranil Vikramasinghe and Gotabi Rajapaksha signs because uh, towards the last stages of the war in 2009, the international community were bystanders and just watched uh, when Tamil people were getting killed uh, by the state forces. And 13 years later, we still haven't uh, found uh, a solution and we're still stuck at the UN Human Rights Council for the human rights violation. So we shouldn't have a repeat of a uh, situation of that nature and the international community should intervene uh, immediately. Shanakan Rasamanikam, who's in Colombo, a Sri Lankan parliamentarian. Thank you.